your, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, yeah, I've been, I've seen a couple of things and heard a couple of things of Majid Nawaz, yeah, I've seen and heard it, and I've seen what you have to say, and heard what you have to say, in my humble opinion, it makes no sense for you to be working together. Well, I, 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 I you're more, I you're disagree. more online, you're more center ground in the sense of Islamic traditionalism. In fact, I, per, I genuinely do believe that if you actually voiced your opinion in a public platform, yeah. maybe he'll be, maybe he'll reprimand you, say this is wrong. No, not at all. Okay, in that case, you need to make very clear. If in order for, because the thing is, look, my my opinion on Quilliam is that it's, it's a, it doesn't it doesn't help counter extremism. It's, it's working in the wrong strategies. Well, I reckon. Uh, let me tell you something. I reckon we do the best counter extremist work, and that's no. When I say we, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about people that are traditionalists. I'm not talking about me. Well, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. But the problem is your traditional ideas are problematic. No, but a lot of them you believe in, anyways. We've come to that conclusion. What I was going to say to you is this, Adam. Listen. Yeah. Look. This is the way to deal with uh, extremism, in my opinion. You can take it, policy or uh, uh, recommendation, throw it in the bin, use it, do whatever you want to do. If you're serious about it, okay, do not work with people who are, to the Muslim community, seen as not helping or not helpful. People like Majid Nawaz, because he's not like you. He's very much against Islam in many aspects and Muslims. And in our opinion, in our opinion, it's our subjective opinion, no problem. That's number one. Free yourself from those individuals. Number two, what you've got to do is you've got to work within the framework. Muslims that, let me tell you this candidly and clearly for you to hear, please. If you're serious about countering extremism, listen to what I'm saying. Muslims that have decided or are about to decide to blow themselves up, yeah, on a train or on a plane or on an automobile or whatever it may be, yeah. those individuals will not be convinced by the rhetoric of post-enlightenment. They will not be, let me tell you why. Because, what, no, hold on, they will not be convinced by post-enlightenment liberalistic uh, demo democratic reasoning. They can only be convinced they can only and will only be convinced. No, no, but yeah, those individuals are are, are discredited by the Muslim community. What, Sheikh Osama has Yes, yes, they're discredited by the Muslim. I'm not saying that they have no knowledge. I'm not saying this. But they I'm, argue within the tradition. No, they don't really, because they're saying things which are... Let me tell you what, let me, let me tell you that. Adam, please. You know that? No, I do know. I've, I've heard him say that you For can break example. your fast at a sort of time according to uh, Saudi that's Arabia. A, that's an Azhari opinion. Uh, yes, yeah, Azhari opinion can be... Of, uh, there are many Azhari opinions that are very much isolated. Yeah? yeah but it's an Azhari. Opinion. Yeah, no, but the it's second, not mainstream. Second, no, most look, important authority. You have to work within the mainstream. No, but who's mainstream? Your mainstream? No, no, no. There is a mainstream no, tradition. There is a scholastic Azhar tradition. University. It's not Azhar. It's, Azhar that hasn't made that fatwa. Is, it is, it it's a one Azhari. person. No, it's no, not. It's not. It's Azhar. It's what is, Azhar. Tell, tell me where it says that Azhar has. They don't do. They don't have legend like that. It is a fatwa supported by Azhar. No, no. Al Azhar have not made this fatwa. You're from Egypt, right? I'm from. Yeah, I know. Trust me. They don't have a legend like that. Yeah. They don't have a legend. They have. They have Tantawi. They have the, what, these guys, uh, Jumu'ah, yes. and these guys who are discredited in their own right. Trust me. Listen, 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 listen. listen. There uh, is no. The Jumu'ah, who's the leader of uh, Asar now, is completely discredited in the Muslim world. You should know this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, but I'm not saying he doesn't have any knowledge. But it is an Asari. No problem, Adam. Listen to me. What I'm saying to you candidly and clearly, yeah, is that if you're serious about, seriously, you want to stop people blowing themselves up. Full stop. Yeah. You want to stop people killing and this and that. I want to do the same thing. Maybe we have different reasons for doing it. Maybe me and Imagine have different reasons for doing it. Maybe me and the government of Britain have different reasons for doing it. We have different reasons for doing it. We actually do have different reasons. I'm the reason why I'm doing it is to protect my own community. I will tell you straightforward. Yeah, because the first corruption is the deviant ideology that they're going to be following, which could take them out of Islam altogether, in my opinion. Yeah, that's the first corruption. I want to protect them from that before anything else. That's number one. So here, what I'm saying is, if you're really serious about that, you need to join, you need to free yourselves from those individuals who are completely discredited in the Muslim community, and then you need to equip yourself with the traditional knowledge, which I'm sure you have some basis on that, and then you have to join those traditionalists who work within the tradition, the mainstream tradition, and I'm talking about the former Dahib, etc., in order to try and divert those people away using that rhetoric. The post-enlightenment rhetoric works with the British public, you know, non-Muslims really well, I'm telling you. But it does not work 
with someone who's about to kill some uh, some people. No, but we, we, we have... Do you understand this point? We have, we have someone who's going to blow themselves up. If someone says, look, it's not very democratic what you're doing, I, yeah? I understand freedom of you're... speech. And I say, listen, man, I'm proposing freedom of speech. And, uh, exactly, that's exactly right. He's going to give him fuel and energy. And, and he just, yeah. what he needs is someone to I come to him and say, listen, let me tell you something. No, no, I, I know. I'm not saying it's you. I'm saying that no, what he, this guy needs, what does. this guy needs, this, that he's about to blow himself up. And I'm not taking any credit for myself. Allah, yeah? A lot of people within the da'wah scene, a lot of uh, uh, the mashaykh, the mashaykh particularly, yeah, those who are very engrossed in the traditional works, yeah, they are, in my opinion, at the front line of de-radicalizing people in that same way that we talked about. When we say de-radicalizing, we're talking about stopping them from blowing themselves up. You know why? Because they bring those guys to the corner and they say, you know what? You know what you're doing here goes against this Quranic verse and that scholar. The, do you hold yeah. on to the concept of Dar al-Kufr? Do you hold on to these concepts? Darul Harb, look, this is what you say to us. Darul Kufr, do you hold on to the concept of Darul Kufr? No, it's not, it's not Darul Kufr, it's Darul Harb. Darul Harb, Darul Islam. Darul Kufr, Darul Dar Islam. Dar no, 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 Darul Harb. Darul Harb is where war is happening, yeah? No problem. You, if someone comes to you and says, I believe we're in Darul Harb, say, no problem. It's what you say to Adam. Say, Darul Harb, for those who believe in it, means the place of war. Say, I agree, no problem, we believe we're in Darul Harb, yeah? Oh, uh, no problem, yeah? How would you deal with that individual? I'm asking you. I mean, um, this is a bit of a training now. I'm not saying that you need it, but a bit of a training. I'm saying I'm a radical. I'm coming to you now. I'm saying, look, we're in Darul Harb. We're in the place of war. How are we going to... Uh, uh, we need to how would you counter this? If someone will come to you, are you going to say it was very not undemocratic, it's irrational? He's going to say, you know, I don't care about democracy, and I've got my own rationality. No, the Quran I, says I, Darul Harb. I, I'm going to kill the guy. Well, how would you deal with it? I would, would you? Yeah. construct the whole yeah. identification of Darul Harb. Okay, he's not going to be, he's going to say, look, you know what he sees? He's going to say, look, we've got Adam Deen versus Ibn Qudama. We're going to take Ibn Qudama because Adam Deen is not trained Islamically. He doesn't have the Arabic language, etc. Ibn Qudama is, is at a mountain. I'm going to take him over than you because he knows more about Islam than you. Full stop. Case closed. You know how to deal with it? Someone comes to you and says, Dar al-Harb. I believe I'm in Dar al-Harb, yeah? Say, okay, no problem. Let's take for the sake of argument we're in Dar al-Harb. We're a place of war. You know what he says to them? First question. Is it okay to kill a cat in Dar al Harb? First question. This is, uh, this is a training now. I hope the Quilliam guys there, they're listening. You say to them, Is it okay to kill a cat in Dar al Harb? Is it okay? What is he going to say? He's going to say, No, it's not okay. If he knows anything, he say, No, uh, I don't know, actually. He said, I don't know. He said, What well, the hadith of the woman that killed, uh, the, uh, tortured the cat should go to? Hell. Yeah. yeah, okay, fine. Is killing a cat haram? Yes. Is it haram in Dar al Harb and Dar al Islam? Yes. How do we know it's, it's haram in both places? Because there's no reason for us to believe that this uh, general rule is uh, not applicable in Dar al Harb. Fine. Let's take it to the next step. Is it haram to kill a child, a baby, in Dar al Harb? So, of course. Why? Because, uh, you know, it's haram to kill. Uh, the Prophet told us straightforwardly that. When the woman was killed in the battlefield, he said it wasn't for her to be killed. Fine. So here, was that Darul Harb? Yes. What, about, what did he what say? What about the hadith that said... Um, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. wait, wait, wait so so wait, then you move wait, wait, up. Wait, wait. So fine, so killing civilians, no, 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 whether wait. it be in Darul Islam or no, no, Darul Harb is haram. Wait, wait. Then he's going to say, okay, well, you know what? You make a point. No, this no, hadith, no, 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 What about the hadith yeah, that yeah. when... When they killed uh, children accidentally, and they said, "Don't worry, they are, they are them." The Prophet allegedly said, "Yes, they yes, are of them." They are yes, Kaaba, obviously. They oh, are oh, them. So Fine. They use that. They yes, yes, exactly. Hadith. Perfect. Yes. Excellent. But, but, but no, see, no, no. You say to them that hadith. Put it in context. The, and what is it? Is it a Sahih hadith or not? These are all yeah, questions you put. No, 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 it's okay. fine. But the, no, 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 but yeah, no, sorry, sorry, no, sorry, sorry. no, no, no. Your methodology doesn't work. It does work. It doesn't because Wallahi, you know, it works. No, no, Wallahi, it, it works. Because he will. I can give you the testimonials, brother. Do you know what we might do? We might get you Wallahi, because at the beginning of this discussion, I said to you, look, what measure, what way of measuring, yeah, your success in terms of counter extremism, as like you call it, yeah. Mm. And you said, really, we have some things here and there. We know it's, it's trivial or whatever. I'm saying to you, we no, have... I gave you a trivial example, Achy, but, but on the ground, uh, there Adam, are people that are actually in prison yes. that we engage with. Adam, I'm telling you, that, our way... They actually they, they, uh, this disavow their extremist No problem. Views. Wallahi. There are people that consider... It, they, we've got people that we've actually... Could, wallahi. Stop. Wallahi. Yes. Wallahi. Wallahi. Yes. Wallahi. Wallahi. Our way works. Do you know why? No, because... But, do you know why our way works? Like, but, no, hold on, hold on. That's like saying Al-Qaeda 
takes people away from ISIS yeah. and they join Al Qaeda and they say, Wallahi, it works. No, no, but. Wallahi, it no, works. No, but I don't know. You with me? So you... It depends. So you're taking them away from being um, uh, jihadists. It's wrong. Yeah. Is God's words wrong? Yeah, but God is just as well. And yeah, God, no problem. But he said, and, God, and, God just, to yes. and also, Islam was revealed. That there was a historical context. No problem. But he's saying the hand of the. Well, he's he, stupid then, isn't he? Who is? The person who said, I'm going to cut the hand of the thief. No, no, the Quran. In the Quran. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. No. I'm not saying that we should cut the hand of the, tri the thief. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm but saying you, we, but you, we already you said. Would do it in Islamic state. No, no. no I will do it. Anyway, <laughs> I'm saying there's a difference between uh, Tafsir and uh, uh, Tanzil. Do you would know you? what affects the British public? Tafsir al hukm is what the Quran says, what the Hadith says. Tanzil al hukm is when it's implemented. Let's talk. What affects the British public? Not Tafsir al hukm I can walk around in my heart and my brain now, listen to me, and believe in my heart, in my brain, that actually, if all the conditions are met and this and that, no preventers are in place, and we lived in a Muslim country, that you know the, the punitive law of cutting the hand off is the most uh, beneficial one or whatever. Does that, my belief, will it ever manifest itself in a sociological environment? It will never ever. Me, no, listen, let, let, hold no, on, no, Adam, no, no, Adam, please, wait. Yeah. It will never manifest itself in a social. It has no implications on the British public because I don't believe any of the Sharia law is applicable to non Muslims. Any of it. Any of not praying, not fasting, not hijab. None of it is applicable to the British non Muslim stealing? public. Stealing, yes. No, no apostasy. All of that is not applicable in Britain. You understand? So here. Ta'silan, as a hukum, I believe it's all true. But tanzilan, implementation, I don't say it's applicable. So me and you have the same, our position has the same effect sociologically. If I bring someone out of blowing themselves up, now blowing someone up does have an effect on the British public. Now British public don't give a damn if I, if I think in my heart that, you know, if, if I lived in an all Muslim country and, this, and, the, and the hand comes off, yeah, yeah, I, I, they don't give a damn if I think yeah. that. It's not going to affect their daily life. But, but what I, is going to affect their daily life I, if I blow myself up? What they need, but the problem with what the, they need, Adam. The, the, the problem with the guy that you're talking to, right, he's been indoctrinated with his ideas, he would consider you an hypocrite because he would say you're being selective with the hadith that you're choosing. No, then so according the, to your own no, methodology, yeah, yeah, no. you would be be considered someone who's not consistent. No, 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 because that's, that's say, according to them. Ahi, you say, Ahi, Ahi, you yeah. need to follow this hadith as well. No, 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 no. So, no but that's but, the thing. But with my methodology, no, 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 I completely no. Adam, that's not right. Do you know why? Because here, you have to understand the difference. The Quran says, um, What what is it to you? This is one of the things that the jihadis they say a lot of the time. One of the main verses that they use in Surah Tawbah. Surah Tawbah. Why don't you go out and fight when it said to, when it said to you fight in the in the way of Allah? Why is it why is athaqaltum il ard that you come uh, that you uh, cling onto the earth? Are you happy with this world? What is the life of this world uh, to the uh, hereafter except for a little? Uh, yeah, it's, it's minor. Now, having said that, now the first thing I'll say to them, oh, okay. The Quran says, When it's said to you, fight in the way of Allah. Who's speaking? Not Allah. All of the Mufassirun of this verse say, when the Amir, Mark Sageman makes a really interesting book, the Amir meaning the leader. Mark Sageman makes a really interesting book called Leaderless Jihad. It's one of the yeah, main books. He even realized, he's a non-Muslim, he realizes that actually this whole physical jihad, what's required for it to be effective or to, to actually work is a leader in the country in these things. Just like any country has its leaders and soldiers, whatever. Yeah, same thing. Now that we have a, de uh, a fragmented ummah, there is no jihad like that except for the defensive one. The defensive one where someone comes and kills you and tries to, your town and these things, so you, you have to fight. you don't believe in offensive jihad? Today we don't have, of course not. In this world, Ta'silan, yes. Ta'silan, so jihad... So you, don't, you, don't, you don't believe in... No, no, ta using, wait. Sorry, I apologize, yes. in jihad a being talab. used to implement the Sharia? Ta'silan... Ta this is what you have to differentiate. Ta'seel and asl. As an asl, you have two kinds of jihad. Ibn Qudama says you have jihad al uh, difa' and jihad al talab. The, uh, jihad al difa' is when you're defending yourself. Yeah. Jihad al talab is when you're preempting jihad. You're physically doing these things. Yeah? yeah. 
So if, if there was a Muslim country, they have two options. The, jihad al is, uh, is a fard. You have to, everybody has to fight, even the women and the thing. In the country, they have to fight for to defend themselves. Jihad al-Talab, now the scholars talk about how that should be implemented, etc. And usually it's implemented in the context of empire. And really and truly, I believe in my opinion, and that's going to sound controversial, but in the framework of the medieval period, it was to prevent, yeah, being engulfed and absorbed into other empires and to preempt that by absorbing other empires into its own empire. That's what we had in place. These things are tethered, qualified by lots of other laws. For example, the, the aqd and the mithaq that some Muslim countries can have with other Muslim countries. You could argue, the UN, you could argue, the UN, because the person, you have to understand something, I'm sure you're clever enough to understand it. The, the pre-World War I world is completely different to the post-World War I world. Completely different. Wallahi, it's like com two worlds. Pre-World War I, before 1914, everyone was on expansion. All the, you had you had empires, you had the Austro-Hungary uh, uh, Empire, you had the German Empire, you had the Prussian Empire, you had the Russian Empire, you, Ottoman Empire. All of these empires were unashamedly expansionist and imperialist. And it was the menu of the day to be imperialist. In that context, Islam says expand. Because if you don't expand, you're going to be expanded upon. Or, or, and this is the second option. You have, no, hold on, hold on. You, you, you have, no, no, I'm talking about the talab. I'm talking about the proactive. Or, so you have, you have, you can expand. Or two, you can decide to make agreements with those other empires such that you both don't expand. Both of those things are, those things are reasonable recourses in that environment. Yes. Post, post World War One. Sorry to, to go. Post World War One. Post World War Two. So, uh, yeah, of course. Post World War One. World War II, you had the League of Nations which failed, then you had the UN. The UN is an American thing, yeah, it's really it's dominated by America. But the, I'm not talking about the UN now, but the idea of countries coming together, deciding not to expand, is supported by the Islamic text. So, so the key point that I was trying to make was you don't fight. So here, what I believe... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, of course. You don't fight because of their disbelief. Yes, of course not, yes. That's fine. Because the Quran says very clearly, in chapter 22 of the Quran, it says, it says very, very clearly, it says, um, in chapter 22, verse 59, yeah? It says, um, How good. <laughs> just say the English, bro. Uh, <laughs> just say the English. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it says that uh, it's written upon, yeah, those uh, Muslims to fight. Because they have been oppressed. Yeah, because they have been oppressed. So the oppression is the reason, the illa. Yes, yes. So here the point is this. Jihad has always got its couched in that language, it's a language of justification. Now what I was going to say, in a nutshell, bro, what we're doing, I personally believe, just watch it closely, and it will work more than what you're doing. You can only do, you can only do what you think is right. Yeah. Right? But we're working in the same direction. Uh, Hopefully. Well, Majid, I, I completely associate from this guy, to be honest. I believe this guy, Majid Nawaz, okay, I genuinely, he's hated within the Muslim community. You have to understand this. Now, it's not productive having someone who's so hated within the Muslim community, seen as a sellout, excommunicated by the majority of people. He's not going to do any good in account extremism. It's only for the Muslims that are traditionalists that delve into the tradition. We're, we're going to do the best in this regard. We should learn from each other from that perspective. Yeah? Jazakallah. Good to meet you, bro. You too, man. Thank you. Nice to meet you. You too, man. Take it easy. You too. Where's, where's the gum shield? It's inside here. Good. Good. You took that punch well. You took that punch yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>